Hi and welcome to the second part of the series which I'm doing on converting the Bruder Mercedes car transporter to radio control. In this second part I'm going to be installing drive into the rear of the truck. The first thing that we need to do is we need to take the back off and I'll just show you quickly how that comes off which is pretty simple. In order to get this off there are little black tabs on the on the black part, the chassis, which you need to move slightly out with a screwdriver and then release each part. It's, it's easier to start at the back and you have to make sure that it doesn't find its way back in again while you're doing the next one. So here we have the back loosened and I'm just going to put something in there to hold it out. That will do and then similarly the front there we go just before I go any further it's interesting to note that the top which I took from the tractor trailer fits this as well if I just put it in there So these parts are compatible with each other. Now the next thing to consider is what I'm going to use to drive it with. So with the Land Rover I use the little Tamiya single gearbox. I do have two options available to me in terms of the Tamiya gearboxes. I've got this one here which is what I used for the tracked vehicle and this one is the four speed this one is the three speed twin. The main difference from the point of view of this truck isn't so much the gear ratios that you can achieve with it, but the fact that this gearbox case being a four speed is quite a bit wider. And on the back, it shows the width as being 60 millimeters for the main case roughly. And with this one, It's more like 50. Because I'm going to be wanting to put it here between the chassis rails, the chassis rail width is actually quite close to 50. And this will fit in a lot better. I'm still going to, have to do some trimming, but there's going to be more of this left so this is the one which I'm going to go with. In terms of gear ratios, speed and that sort of thing I have done a little bit of homework with the calculator and I worked out that this gearbox in its higher speed is going to with these wheels give me about three and three quarter miles an hour if I was to use the three volt motors and slightly less than that if I use the 6 volt motors so I'm going to test this in the first place using 6 volt motors on its higher speed and see how we do. There is quite a bit of trimming to be done to get this to fit in there. I'm not too worried about the strength and I'm planning that I'm going to put the radio control i.e. the speed controller and the receiver in this area here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to trim out some of this differential area and remove the fake exhaust. I'm going to take away some of this here and I'll come back once I've done that cutting. the first piece out and looking to see how the gearbox lines up. 
to give me some idea of how far back we're going to want to go. I think it's roughly the end lining up with this plastic piece here, so I'm going to want to come across there as well. And I'm going to want to remove the axle. I'll use a Dremel just to saw through it. I don't need the axle. Now I would expect that I'm probably going to need to remove some more material but I'm going to try and remove as little as possible because I want to keep as much structural integrity as I can and it may form a useful mounting point for something like the receiver or the speed controller. So let's just see how that's looking. Well that's going to give us plenty of space I think that's going to give us plenty of space, there's a gap behind here for the gearbox. Next thing to do is to remove the axle, so I'm going to saw that and then take the wheels off. Right, using my M6 bolt trick, which is what I discovered when I was doing the John Deere tractor. I need to make sure that this is all nicely flushed. Now you'll note that I've kept these pieces on because what I'm hoping to do is to have those trap the axles and potentially even give us some suspension. Just can't actually move very far from side to side because we've left enough plastic there to keep it in place. The next thing to do is to attach the wheels to the axles. You can see how first of all it's not sticking out very much and secondly the diameter of the axle to the wheel is completely different. This is about 4mm, that's about 3mm and if you've seen the video which I did on the tractor the method which I'm about to employ will be very familiar to you. Right, so for this next bit I'm going to be using some aluminium tube which is about four millimeters on the outside and about three millimeters on the inside. It's quite a tight fit into the wheels so if I just push it down reasonably hard this is going to help me measure how much of it that I want. I'm going to want the wheels to be just slightly out about there and just lining it up by eye that's the length of rod that I want if you just roll a, a knife over this it cuts very cleanly That's going to sit nicely over there. I'll just do the other one. Right, so that's both wheels and they can move up and down inside the space that the original one did. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap about one and a half to two layers of my sticky tin foil round the axle to bring it up to the same diameter as the inside of these aluminium tubes. Pushing it down firmly as it goes round 
So that's once round. That's about one and a half times round. I can always put more on if I want to. Pushing it down really firmly. Let's just test that in one of these. That's quite tight. In fact, it's very tight, but that's excellent. But I'm also going to want to go through the aluminium tubes so that the grub screws can go onto the side of the hex shafts. side and then the other so to keep the motor in place but also allow it to move I'm going to drill a couple of holes and use cable tie one I think I'm going to use three of them actually. I can always come back and redo this if I want these bits to end up in a different place. That seems to be good. In order for the gearbox to stay central and not rattle around too much, I'm actually going to try putting a couple of bits of fairly dense packing foam underneath the tie wraps either side of the gearbox. Let's push that in. That's sitting there nicely. Before doing the top, I just want to put some 4mm ball races on these axles. One, two. That's fine, I'll just do the other side. Right, so both sets of bearings are on there. And in a moment it'll become clear why I'm doing this. I do still have movement albeit a little bit stiffer. Having gone to all that effort to have this movable it will be good 
get some springs in there so you've got proper suspension. Starting by drilling a couple of pilot holes immediately over the axles. Make sure that's on camera. Right. And taking an old felt tip and having made the hole so that that's a tight fit on there. The felt tip comes with a ready-made stopper so I think I'm going to make use of that so I'll just chop the end of it off. And I expect this is something I'm going to have to experiment with a bit. I'll just pop a spring in there like so. Like that. We've actually got sprung suspension there. I don't know if I'm going to leave more spring, less spring, or whatever. That's something that I'm going to find out once more of the truck has been done. Just before I wind this video up, I think I ought to point out one small improvement which I have already had to make, and that is I've put a couple of 4mm washers on each side in between the bearings underneath the spring and what that does is it prevents the spring creeping down the side and getting stuck and fouling the axle and a couple of screws completes this stage I think that I'm going to end the video at this point because it's actually been quite involved doing all of this. Although I am pleased with how it's turned out so far. In the next video, I think that rather than carrying on at this end, I think I'm probably going to try and think about how to get the front wheel steering. As ever, I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them in the box below and until the next installment thank you very much for watching